What up, nerds? Uh, I bought myself a present. I just just arrived from China. <laughs> uh, I got an email from Hi-Fi Man with an offer that seemed like almost too good to be true. So I thought I'd treat myself. I don't have any planar headphones because obviously we mainly deal with Sennheiser and Bear Dynamic. I have worked on a few Odyssey headphones and these are the very cheap, the cheapest ones I've seen. Um, let's have a look. So these are, oh, sorry, let's get it open. Ooh, nicely packaged. I can't even remember what, what model these are. But, wow, I should not be doing unboxing videos. <laughs> these are the Hi-Fi Man HE400SE. And uh, I pre-ordered them. And I got them for, I think, 150 quid, including shipping. And they also chucked me in a set of these uh, in-ear jobbies with a little case. So that was nice. Like I don't, I don't use in-ear headphones, but I'm going to give these to some. You know, these are a good, good gift I could give to somebody. Uh, yes, yeah, so I got that for free. Got these for 150. Happy days. I don't know if these are any good or not. If you're looking for a, you know, a, a, a review of these, you're probably going to be disappointed with this video, um, unless you're looking at a review of how they're constructed. Because I'm going to have a look inside. See what's, see what's in there, see how they're made. We, we dick around with headphones a lot and I've designed a couple and I'm just fascinated to see um, how they made these for such a reasonable price. So I bought them direct, but like 150 quid, they've got to make a profit on it. I don't know, they've got to make, I don't know what their margins will be, but I would have thought it's going to be at least 10%. And then you've got shipping and warranties. This box, like the packaging is quite nice. That would have cost a couple of quid. Um, yeah, it's a nice, nice interference type fit on the box. Uh, what have I got in here? I've got a warranty card, I think. Something that explains about the, the, the magnet technology. Stealth magnets. Ooh. <laughs> Wow, so I won't be detected by radar while using these. That's good. Uh, what have we got? A little silica gel. Delicious. Delicious. And a cable, which is a bit meh. If only I knew someone that could make a nicer cable for these. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so the cable, I don't know. Like, I design cables, so I'm going to be a bit... But it's, it's all right. It's all right. It's better than most, to be honest. Um, it looks like it's a braided silver cable. So yeah, it's got. I'm being mean. It just looks a bit skinny. I like, you know, I like the fat boys. Um, Jack is a Sony copy, I think, because the Sonys used to have the green, green rings. That's how I used to be able to sell it with genuine Sony. Um, but yeah, cables are out. I'm being mean. The cable is good. The cable is good. For 150 pound headphones, that's good, I'm sure. So, here they are. Um, let's have a look. See how we get into these, I think. It seems obvious, but with big old screws there. Let's have a, let's undo, undo one of those. I haven't got a big screwdriver, unfortunately. Yep, that is real. So, you know, on some of these things, it looks like a screw, and then you go to unscrew it, and it's just like a, it's just for looks. So far, I'm giving the maximum points. That's a that's a nice big screw. Don't need any fancy tools to get that out. Let's get that one off. I'm actually quite interested to have a look at, uh, have a listen to these. Obviously, I am, because it's my new toy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it'll be, uh, just have a look now, we'll see how it's made, I'll have a listen to them, and then maybe I might try tuning them, just to see if we can squeeze a bit more goodness out of them, if I'm not totally happy with the sound. Right, so I'm not going to take the other ear cup off, because, you know, they're, they're pretty symmetrical, but um, overall, I like this part, 
nice aluminium ear cup holder, but the rest of the headband feels a bit plasticky. I'm not going to lie. Like the quality of the plastics is not as good as you would get on, say, a Biodynamic. And the, the, the leather padding feels like, yes, yeah, I don't know, it feels, it feels cheap. These are cheap headphones. It's just weird that they've got this really nice bit that feels super premium attached to this bit, which is a bit meh. But again, cheap headphones. Cheap headphones with clever technology. So does anyone know how to take the pads off these? Do you reckon it's a lefty Lucy? Twist? No. Do you reckon it's a pop? No. Oh, you come off. Yeah, it seems to be some kind of clippy poppy mechanism. So I just didn't want to break it, especially as I haven't listened to these yet. But look at this. Look at that. These are nicely made. Like for 150 quid, there's a. These are well made. So, so yeah, you've got the stator magnets on there. Um, I don't know if you, you probably, if you're watching this, you probably vaguely know how these things work. Essentially, you'll have a membrane in there held in between two layers of magnets, I believe. And then as a current goes through the membrane, you can see that there's traces going through there, like circuit traces that are on the membrane. So that generates a magnetic field which pulls the whole thing backwards and forwards. So it's like having a really big flat diaphragm that, um, that moves. And because you've got the magnets all the way up it, you get quite a lot of control. I, as I said, I don't have a great deal of experience with this dial of headphone. So, I don't know, like I know the theory, but I'm um, quite excited to put these back together and have a listen. Why is it the screwdriver you really need is not to hand? Is that too small? That would be all right. All right, so as you can see, you've got uh, six screws holding this plate in. Just put a bit of that polystyrene underneath to stop me from scratching it up because these are my these are my new toys. But yeah, I'm gonna ooh, yeah, I think I might have to do something about that headband. These could be much sexier if um I change that. Or maybe we'll just use the drivers out of these and make completely new enclosures. I've been working on some interesting enclosure designs recently but fortunately it's all a bit hush hush because it's got some novel novel technology that we're still kind of tweaking and ugh, patents and things it's very difficult because uh, like a lot of the stuff we do is is not patentable and the stuff that we do do that is patentable isn't really worth copying <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, we don't. We we sell a lot of our mods and upgrades. Uh, pretty much, you know, we don't make any profit on them. There's no profit for someone to come in and and steal it as an idea. Um, but yeah, this new headphone ear cup enclosure type thing type deal. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. And if it works it will be the kind of thing that people will want to copy so I have to, yeah, it's very difficult very difficult I'm not allowed to not allowed to talk about it too much but yeah we're um, yeah working on a new design of ear cup uh, right okay so this piece metal what is it just feels like stamped out yeah I think that's stamped stamped metal and then you've got um, a layer of foam underneath to kind of support everything and stop it from rattling around. There's one more screw there. So you saw those are quite long screws going all the way through the assembly so really good you know it's pretty good design. It's very interesting because uh, yeah it looks like they've put some love into this because screwing it all the way through is going to give it a good good rigidity and uh, but then they've saved money by stuff like this metal thing that's been stamped out rather than sort of machined or anything because it doesn't really make a lot of difference to the performance obviously it doesn't look as sexy as a nice machined part um, but they're trying to they're clearly going for kind of quality versus price 
you know, the best quality sound you can get for the for the hundred and fifty pounds or whatever these cost. Yeah, I think it's coming out. Oop, there's that screw. I don't know what that screw is holding in. We'll find oh there's a little metal tag there that's connected to that that screw. Um yeah, so these have got what's called D uh DFM design for manufacture. Nice and easy to put together, but it's not designed for repair, uh, which is where you make it easy to pull apart. But yeah, so looks like a screwdriver down through the screw holes and you can kind of lever this out. Let's be very careful. What's holding this in place? Seems like the socket. So we might have to undo the socket. Um, it's got a little retaining ring with two two notches to get it undone. Should be able to do that with a screwdriver. He says not being able to do it with a screwdriver. Um, nope, nope, it's okay. It was just a bit stuck. So there's a little bit of glue on there holding it to the socket. So right, we've got that. We've got that out. So there we go. That's the. So you can see through it there. That's where the magic happens. So you've got a layer of magnets on the back, a layer of magnets on the front, a diaphragm in between that wibbles backwards and forwards to create the sound. Uh, inside here, we've got again pretty cheap plastic. Um, and a grid on the back there. So things that we could do to make this sexier. Now I suspect that this driver is pretty good. You know, I don't think they're going to develop a deliberately bad driver just to put in their cheap SE model. I think they've just cheaped out on the rest of the materials, which is fair enough. Um, so we could make a nicer housing for this, like a nice turned wood or something like that to go on there, which would look nice. Um, it looks like this is clear coated so they, again it's weird they've they've done the best they can for the money um like this is a relatively cheap plastic and then they've got a silver metalized coating and then it does look like it's got a clear lacquer over the top which gives it a nice deep um deep finish i do a lot of paint work so you know, I, I, i'm quite happy with that that looks that looks really good like the finish that they've got on them is very good um, it just feels very plasticky. So uh, I'm not going to dismantle them any further than that because I'm almost certainly going to break something. <laughs> but you can see that the the, the sandwich here. Um, so you've got the the diaphragm in the middle, and then these two plastic plates that hold it together, and they are screwed again quite heavily all the way around, and the bolts go all the way through. The bolts on the other side. So I'm going to I'm going to give this, you know, probably a 10 out of 10 for you know, just building it the best you can for 150 quid. It's um it's very good. You know, it's very difficult to make something for that kind of money that is good quality and they've put the money where it counts. And they've saved money other places, so I, I'm going to say this is this is very good and uh, well done, Hi-Fi Man. Now then, I'm going to I'm going to put these back together, and I'm going to house me a listen. I might make myself a, a nice cable. We'll get one of the lads to make me a cable, um, and we'll have a listen to these and see what they're like. Yeah, I've had a really good listen, and uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. There's definitely there's definitely a certain magic that the planers have got. Obviously, these are the very cheapest planar magnetic ones that you can get. So, um, you know, you've got to you've got to give them a break. <laughs> As you've seen, they're quite complicated to construct, and uh, yes, I'm very impressed that they've managed to do it for the price they have. This cable, as I said, is pretty. In the the actual design of it is pretty good. You know, with the with the braided 
looks like silver plated copper but it's very microphonic that's why we stopped kind of making these kind of cable so any kind of uh, anything rubbing against the cable you can hear in the headphones so I I would probably replace that it's very difficult because these are 150 pounds you know you don't want to spend a hundred pounds on a cable um, but I, I don't know I'm not, <laughs> not convinced by the cable I, I like you know I, I don't know it's not it's not great it doesn't have a great feel to it but I'm sure like electrically it's probably very good and for the money it's very good it just feels a bit too stiff and it's a little bit too microphonic um, another thing I did notice a couple of things I missed when I pulled apart obviously to mention the, the it's got angled pads which is good so they kind of angle it angle the drivers in towards your ear which gives slightly better sound staging and the clicking mechanism oh that's really good it's really nice really good feel to it you can tell it's a I'm gonna get the headband apart at some point but yeah it's a good quality clicking mechanism yeah so I'm still giving these you know 10 out of 10 for trying but yeah I think you probably need to spend a bit more money so when I was listening to it classical music vocal stuff they're very good the bass is quite rolled off on them and the highs are a bit of a bit of a mess there's all kinds of peaks and troughs up at the at the high end so th I reckon there is some tuning that can be done I've never tuned a pair of these or like a pair of planers really like I've added a few upgrades with people but I haven't really done a proper tuning session so if any of you know of any tips and tricks for making these drivers sound a little bit nicer let me know but yeah yeah very interesting it was really interesting to listen to a very cheap pair of planar headphones um i'm not sure they're for me i like a bit of punch in the bass uh which the planers don't often have like some of them like the, the lcd fours that kind of stuff they have but uh yeah like the uh, uh, obviously it's difficult because i'm comparing these to other headphones in my collection most of which i've spent months and months tweaking and footling until they sound just how i want them so these are just fresh out of the box and i'm sure with a bit of bit of tuning they would probably meet my needs better and it's my own personal taste sound is a very personal thing i find the highs a little bit too harsh on this uh, mids are really good really good accuracy and detail especially for the money lows a bit too rolled off needs a bit more something in the low end um, but yeah 150 pound headphones and as you saw inside it's um it's pretty amazing that they've they've done it for the money so fair play hi-fi man and thank you very much for doing these for me cheap and it wasn't just because it's me just just a general email they sent out if you pre-ordered them you got them cheap and you got a free pair of in-ears so like in-ears cost uh, like 20 30 quid this, this is, these are probably only just cost me the same price a pair of hd 25s or something so these are yeah pretty good if you if you want to see us dick around with these uh, stick some stuff in the comments if you have any experience tuning these I would be grateful for like any top tips because it's going to save me a lot of time and messing around if someone else has already started and, uh, and yeah like subscribe you, I'll, I'll do some other stuff this was just interesting just came in the post got a bit excited thought I'd open them up and see what they look like inside uh, not quite the same as our usual videos but hey eh, eh, you know whatever anyway loving your work